Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The new ANC president is hoping to reignite growth through a new pact with business, a restoration of policy certainty and an overhaul of governance at state companies. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss prospects for Cyril Ramaphosa's new deal. Welcome Terence. Hi oh, Sam. So how would you describe the approach of the ANC president, the new ANC president, to business and the economy? Yes, I think there's going to be a more of a, a listening uh, type approach and a less uh, sort of duplicity. So I think business and government have been engaging over the last few years, but the trust relationship has really broken down quite badly because while government may have said the, <laughs> the right things in meetings, that's not how it behaved. So we've seen a sort of a retardation in the relationship between business and government in 2017 building on a number of years of, of uh, trust deficit. And I think that uh, uh, Sir Ramaphosa's approach is going to be to try and mend that relationship and then to try and negotiate as, as is his uh, sort of demeanor and the pro his approach generally to politics is to negotiate a, a pact between government, business and labor that tries to put everyone in a position of some sort of comfort where everyone offers some something and get something in return. Now, there's no doubt a business uh, has been living through an atmosphere of political and policy uncertainty. So they, they, they would like to see some movement and some action. Political certainty has to come in the form of what uh, uh, Sura Ramaphosa and the new leadership of the ANC are going to do about the current president of the ANC, oh, uh, president of the country, Jacob Zuma, now that uh, Sura Ramaphosa has won the election. And I think there's, there's a the clock is ticking there in terms of wanting some political certainty around a, rebuilding a credible presidency, a credible cabinet, and having a, a sort of from that uh, filtering down into credible leaders of different institutions and state-owned enterprises. And then on the policy front, I think there, while business um, is not necessarily unhappy with the broad thrust of ANC policy, there are elements that they are concerned about that they really would like to government to do what it says and say you know and say what it's going to do and we've really had major gaps in that area over the last few years particularly the areas that are focused on quite a lot of energy as well as mining these are major areas of policy uncertainty that need desperate attention and where business will be prepared to give if they get some sort of certainty in that area and I think what uh, government will be wanting uh, and Labour will be wanting from business is some commitment around transformation and some commitment around uh, employment, where the two major uh, problems faced in the sort of uh, corporate sector um, and in the country generally, especially the employment crisis. And for the, the, the deal that I'll probably, that Sir Ramaphosa would like to probably extract from Labour is some sort of, a, a sort of commitment to industrial relations peace Obviously, that's going to be tricky. Uh, Labor is a very divided house at the moment, but I think there's a view that we that you know the big priority is to get South Africa back on a growth footing. At the moment, our potential growth is really weak, and it's it's not at a point where we can really deal with our big social problems. So to get uh, a commitment and a pact between or social compact between the big uh, three social partners, I think is going to be a priority for the new ANC president. A critical concern remains the state of the country's finances and the potential for certain newly adopted policies to further destabilise the fiscal balance. Yes, I think, as I said, on the broad fiscal trajectory, I mean, the policy trajectory, I think there's some comfort and it's not major change, but there are a couple of new elements and new strands that have come into policy that business and society generally will have to come to terms with. The one is this free higher education um, policy that was announced sort of in the run-up to the conference by President Zuma and the second is around uh, land reform or expropriation without compensation. These are two things that, uh, these are two policy issues that uh, the country are going to have to grapple with seriously over the next few months and years I think and I think the immediate uh, issue is around how this commitment to free higher education will be funded. Um, we know that uh, from the medium-term budget policy statement that was really a, a dismal and dire outlook provided by uh, the finance minister Malusi Gigaba where there was really very little wriggle room to find new resources and uh, I think that's, that's going to be a major focus as we come up to the February budget. 
again, when I talked about the policy and political uncertainty and bringing some certainty to the political environment there, we're going to have to see, you know, what happens on February the 8th, who delivers the State of the Nation, what happens later in the month, who delivers the budget, and that, that might also change the tone and tenure uh, of, of some of the concerns around uh, these new policies. And then the, the, the big issue of land reform and uh, hiring, how to do that in a way that is, is not destabilizing to agricultural production as well as, but, but sort of starts moving the needle in terms of having black farmers uh, getting uh, access to land and really transforming that sector. It's a, it's a really difficult uh, task and has the potential to be seriously destabilizing in terms of not only domestic destabilizing, but in terms of the country's image. So those are two big policy uh, decisions that came out of December that will have to be dealt with over the next months and years. Terence, besides dealing with um, Jacob Zuma, President Jacob Zuma, and uh, corruption and restoring the credibility of certain institutions, ESCOM should remain a top priority. ESCOM is, I think, the top priority at the moment. I think it's the burning platform for government and for the fiscal balance. We mentioned higher education, potentially land reform. Um, those are also very important, but the burning platform, and it's coming soon, is the fact that ESCOM can really bring the whole uh, country down in terms of being really too big to fail in its current form and structure. And uh, you know, we know that ESCOM didn't get what it asked for from the regulator in terms of uh, tariff increases from April 1. We know that the, because of the lack of credibility of its leadership and board, it's having serious troubles in approaching uh, actors outside of government, so the banks and as well as the capital markets to raise the finance it needs to close some very gaping holes. And these holes are going to start emerging pretty soon. The report suggests from February uh, there's a, a debt refinancing sort of uh, sword of Damocles hanging over Eskom and that, that's go just going to continue over the next few years. Eskom's taken on a massive amount of debt to fund the Kusile, Madupe and Angula build program. <coughs> and <coughs> those programs haven't gone as foreseen um, <coughs> we don't even know, I think, the final capital costs of those two projects, even though we have the sort of estimate of around 305 uh, a billion rand. That doesn't, I think, include massive claims that are on the way, and it doesn't include interest during construction. We know that Eskom's talking about needing, uh, having a sort of shortfall if there was an inflation-linked tariff increase, which is basically what they got, of 60 billion rand a year. This is, these are not small numbers, <coughs> and these are devastatingly big numbers in the context of the tight fiscal balance that at the moment Malusi Gagaba has to manage. But at the moment, uh, uh, but the issue is there's two really um, strands to this Eskom problem. There's the immediate um, financial breakdown uh, which has to be solved and that's really something that can only be solved, I think it's a people problem before it's a policy problem. So we need, as I said, the political certainty to have the, the, the credible um, leadership in government to be able to appoint a credible board at Eskom, which unfortunately we still do not have. And that board can then appoint the credible executives ca that can run uh, the utility in a more uh, sustainable way and a, a way that the market will accept it and trust that their money is, they're not throwing good money after bad. I don't think that's how the market is feeling about Eskom quite at this moment. So that is an urgent uh, issue to solve the people problem and I suppose it can be solved pretty quickly but it can only be solved if this tightrope that uh, Sir Ramaphosa is currently walking between unity and, and renewal. If we start moving from the, the sort of heavy weighting towards unity that we saw in the post uh, uh, Nasrec conference period to the renewal side which we, we're seeing signs of I think in society we're seeing that the as, uh, asset forfeiture unit is starting to act. We're seeing changes in personnel in, in the, the crime um, uh, intelligence uh, uh, area. So we're seeing green shoots in that area, but I think you know we need to see some serious personnel changes at Eskom as well, especially at the board level initially and then filtering down into the executive. But the other strand and components, and, and this is the issue, um, do we do a, a sort of band-aid solution for Eskom, which is really an accounting type-led solution where we find the money, but we don't do any fundamental restructuring? Or do we 
use this as an opportunity to look at the sustainability of Eskim's business model. Now we've heard over and over again, especially from business, that Eskim's business model is no longer fit for purpose. And that's why it's going to be a risk. And it's not only a risk, an immediate risk or a burning platform, as I suggest, but it's a longer term uh, systemic risk. And I think there is, uh, it will have to walk on, you know, walk and chew gum. So we'll have to deal with the immediate uh, um, problems of the debt um, and being able to be a, a going concern, which I think <coughs> is almost a moot point because we can't allow Eskim to fail. Um, but we also need to look at the model, at the, the business model of Eskim and whether it is really fit for the future. And we've seen major changes in the energy environment, not only in this country, but around the world. And I think we haven't been fully alive to those changes and to the, st the structure of the electricity supply industry and something like Eskom. Uh, what is, what is the, the most appropriate structure to, to navigate that future? Uh, unfortunately, if we don't do both, the, the sort of the financial fix as well as the restructuring, I think we're going to, in a few years' time, be back to the future in terms of having to bail out Eskom again. So we can see a bailout coming and it's probably going to be necessary but we're going to, we need to remedy this properly. We have to look at the, the structure of Eskom. Does the vertically integrated model still work? Does it make sense for Eskom to be both a generator, a transmitter, distributor, and a system operator, or all, all of those things in the industry, and a near monopoly at that? Uh, or do we need to have a, a different model that uh, is able to integrate the lowest cost energy generation and transmit that to people efficiently and operate the system in a deeper, politicized way. So we make the right choices, the least cost decisions, rather than what we've seen, I think, in the policy in the past, where we make policy adjustments to the integrated resource plan, which really favor technologies that are more expensive. So I think this, we, we're expecting a lot as South Africans at the beginning of 2018, but it is a case of, unless we deal with all a, a number of these things all simultaneously, you know, I think time and patience is going to run out on this feeding of this, this fresh wind and the new winds that are blowing over South Africa. So I think we have to get, uh, um, get, be get that wind behind us and start sort of surfing that, uh, that, that wave. Otherwise, I think patience and the willingness and the goodwill of business is not going to last forever. And then we'll, we'll be back to a situation where there will be much more hopelessness and depression, much like we've seen for the last few years. And it will be about a tussle between civil society and government rather than partnership and cooperation to deal with our problems. Thank you, Terence. That's the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.